Hello and welcome to the 60th tutorial in the C++ programming series and in this part we're going to be looking at the friend class. A friend class is very similar to a friend function which we covered in the previous tutorial. It allows the class to access another class's private and protected variables and methods. So let's just go ahead and open up our project so you can see or so we can show you how to implement a friend class. What we're going to do is create a class called, I'm going to call it class1. Obviously, in your own code, you bear a naming convention that I am using. And I'm just going to create a method called, well, method. And in here, it's going to take a class to object, uh, which is going to be another class which we're going to implement in a moment, int b. And what we're going to do is create class two here and we're going to do public then we're going to do a class two overload the constructor and that's going to take in an integer variable we're going to do friend class class one so it's friend of class one we're going to do void print function create a private integer variable int i and if we were to just run this now, to be failed, unknown type name class 2, did you mean class 1? Basically, even though we have class 2 here, it's declared afterwards. Because it's declared afterwards, the compiler is saying, well, there's no class called class 1 that exists, simply because it's well, declared afterwards. So what you have to do is, and we can't just switch them around as well, because if we switch them around, it won't work because we are using class 1 here. So what we have to do is, just simply create a template class here. So we do we'll just do the bare bones and put a semicolon. Now if we run that, it succeeds because it knows that there's a class called class two now, but it's not implemented until here, which is which is fine. And what we're going to do is just implement the function. So we're going to do class two colon colon class two. So as you guessed it, this is just the constructor. Then be in temp. We'll set i equal to temp. The next thing we'll do is void class one method. And obviously this, this just takes a class two object. And what we're gonna do is make b equal to co2 dot i. Then we'll do void class to print function and in here we we'll do std c out i std n line and now what we can do is get rid of this piece of code here create a class one object call it obj then we'll create a class two object for the obj2 and we're going to put the value of 3 in it then we're going to do obj dot method then we pass in the class 2 object then we do obj2 dot print function and now if we run this we get the value of 3 print here so what has happened we get class 1 uh, object which is this one here it just has a regular method which takes a class 2 object and it has a public integer b. Then we create a class 2 object and we pass in the value 3 to the constructor. So okay, this one, we get this passed in and we get i set to 3. And then the next thing is we do obj.method which is this one here. And what this does is it assigns the value of b or find the value of class 2i to b which is right here and then obj2 dot print function just prints out the class 2 variable so obviously even though we're not doing anything with b as you can see because it's a friend we can actually access cl2s aka this private variable even though like I said, it's private. 
it shouldn't be accessible, but it's because we've put this front class. But if we were to just remove this a second, the only error we get is here. It says, oh, he's a private member of class 2. And basically, it's because class 2 is no longer a friend of class 1. So, yeah, that is really it. So, if you have the friend class declared in this object, I mean this class, uh, then obviously which one is declared, that is the one that can access this class's private variables and methods. That's it for this tutorial. There is a little bit to take in, that there's quite a lot to take in because it is quite complex and the topics are going to get a little more complex now because you've learned quite a lot of the basics. So just watch it again and again. There's a lot of material on Google as well, or they can access well Google, I should say. And if you just have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. Email will be in the description. You can comment on the video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description so you can just compare and contrast. In the next part of the series, we're going to look at class inheritance. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.